Today, we are going to take a look at one of the most exciting new features that has come to Encounter Plus, and that is the web client. You can now play online with Encounter Plus, and I am very excited for this. This is super cool. Until now, it's really been a tool that was designed for playing at the table, maybe not even showing maps. But with all of these awesome map capabilities that have been getting added, it's been really cool to see this update that now allows you to use that functionality online as you play with your friends from their homes. It's great. The thing to know is that there's a little bit of setup that's required going into this. And once we get it set up, then you're pretty much set. And know that for now, this feature is only for premium subscribers. The plan is to eventually open it up to people who've bought the in-app purchase for the external screen. But while it's still getting worked on, it's still in its early stages, it is a premium kind of early access feature for someone who is subscribing. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's go turn it on. I'm gonna to go to the second screen, just like I would normally if I was showing this on a TV. But if I scroll down, we have some new web server sections here. So we've got the web server turned on. You can just turn that on, go to settings. It's gonna tell you what port you're using and if your internet is using IPv6. We'll talk a little bit about what that means, but know that this is hosting the game locally on your computer and you're going to have to get it out on the internet for other people to connect to it. Hey everyone, this is future editing Ducey, realizing that past Ducey didn't think that maybe you already know what I'm about to talk about, which is static IP addresses and port forwarding. You will need to know about port forwarding to get it working, but if you just want to see how it works once it's set up, skip to the time that I've got on the screen and you will see how this works when you're playing online. All right, back at it. So let's go back out of settings real quick here and take a look at what else we've got here, details. This tells us a lot of information, starting with local access. This is our IP address followed by the port. An IP address is just a number that the computer uses to say, this is me, it's like an address in real life. This is where I live. So if somebody locally, meaning like in my own house, on my own Wi-Fi, on the same network wanted to connect to this web server, this is what they would type in. Let's try it real quick. All right, I've got Safari here. Let's see what that said. So I'm gonna click on local access here. And here it says here the server URL and the client URL. And we'll talk about the difference between those in just a moment. But for now, I'm gonna click on this and there's all these ways I could share it. I could just email this to some other folks. But for now, I'm just gonna type that into my browser window here. And this should work with all kinds of browsers, not just Safari on the Mac, but it should work for iPhones, iPads, it should work with Chrome. I know a lot of folks that have someone that can only connect in through their iPhone or their Android device. And one of the really cool things is that he has made this quick enough and low bandwidth enough that it actually works really well with someone that's just hopping up on their phone. Okay, so we will go to this site. And the only thing you need to know here is that if you click on web client, that will take you into the game. A little bit of technical background for those of you that maybe are troubleshooting an issue or just curious. This website, client.encounter.plus, is the website that's feeding your browser all of the system for this game, we could say, all of the nuts and bolts of what's needed to make it work. And then it is connecting to your computer to fill that system in with the maps and tokens and other information. So that's why it looks like we've got kind of got two different places you're connecting in up here. That means that right now this does require online access. If you're hoping to have one of your players just pop up an iPad and control the tokens on your TV, you can do that. And this does run simultaneously with the external screen, which is super cool that you can run them both at the same time. Honestly, I can't think of a better solution for running something at the table and remotely. This is really cool. But you would have to have internet access if you wanted someone to hop on a tablet or phone and start to control your TV. If you want to do it without internet access, the developer has actually made this available for people to run their own version of the client, but that's getting pretty advanced. If you're scratching your head at everything that I just said, just forget about it and know that you've got to be online for it to work. Now this is all great, but this local address I said earlier 
only works, whoops, under details, for someone who's on your network. If you want it to go publicly out on the internet so that your friends can play from home, you will need to give them this public access IP address. Now there is a tricky thing here to know, and that is your IP address might change all the time. Most people's public IP addresses change all the time. Even those internal addresses might change a lot. Now you can set your internal address, your local address, to not change by doing something called a static IP address or DHCP reservations. Now the tricky thing about that is that it's a little bit different for every router that you might be using. So your best bet is just to Google how to set up DHCP reservation on and then type in whatever you are using for your router. So if you were using a Google Wi-Fi router, here you'll get step-by-step -step how to set that up so that that internal IP address doesn't change all the time. That is going to be the first step to making this a lot easier. The second step for it to even work at all is you have to do port forwarding. Now, if you've never done port forwarding before, again, it's a little bit different for every single router out there. So your best bet is to check out this website. It's called portforward.com and you can click here for a list of all routers. You can scroll down or do command F, control F, search for your router brand. Here's D-Link. They have a list of all the D-Link routers out there. Find your model and it will tell you step-by-step -step exactly how to set up port forwarding for the default port, which is 8080 over here. And what you're going to do is forward port 8080 externally to 8080 internally, and it's gonna to go to that local address, that local IP address. And that's just telling your router to take your public IP address on port 8080, any information that comes in there, push it on over to your computer, which is at the local address. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with port forwarding, I'm going to link a video in the description that will walk you through what port forwarding is and how to set it up. But the key to know is this. If someone tries to connect to your computer from the internet, your router is going to stop that from happening because it's not a good idea for security to just let anybody who comes knocking on your router to get in and get access to your computer. By setting up port forwarding, you're poking a little hole in your firewall that allows people to come in and just connect to this one thing. That hole or that port is this number here, 8080, which you can change under settings here which port it is. If your internet service provider requires that you use IPv6, IPv6 is an option here and theoretically, you should not have to do port forwarding if you're using an IPv6 address. If you don't know what an IPv6 address is, most folks are still on IPv4 addresses or normal IP addresses, if we would want to call them normal, that look like this. But if you've got any letters in there or a much longer number that doesn't look like either of these, you might be on IPv6. So this is what you would give somebody who was trying to connect to you remotely after you've set up port forwarding, after you've got an internal static IP address and you've got port forwarding set up, then they should be able to connect to it. That is all by far the trickiest parts of this. If you're not familiar with networking, don't be afraid, give it a shot, but you can always hop over into our Discord, ask some questions, we're more than willing to help you get that set up. Now let's take a look to see how we can actually use this now that it's all set up. I'm gonna go split screen for a minute here. So we can see both the web client and what we would be seeing on our computer or on our iPad. So what's great about this is that players can move their own tokens now. It's not all up to you. Now let's say your players are going a little nuts and they're moving all over the place and you want to kind of control that a little bit. Well, there are some settings that we can tweak. If you go to the external screen, here's all of the web server settings and here it says interactions. Right now it says all, no restrictions, be careful. Everybody can move 
more or less wherever they want. Now you may have noticed that players can't move through walls. Even if I have this movement set to unrestricted where I could drag through walls, players on the web client cannot move themselves through walls. But they can move whenever they want, as far as they want, and start to kind of get all in this. So let's go to interactions and change it to turn only. Now, players can only move their tokens when it's their turn. If I'm out of initiative, you can move freely. And when I hit start, get into combat. Now, I can move as the DM any of the tokens, but players cannot move themselves. But when it's their turn, now they're able to move themselves. The way it's implemented right now, any player could move the player's turn whose it is. So you've just got to take turns, be adults. However, the developer has said that he is working on matching up players to their tokens so it's limited to just those players. But for now, everybody sees all the tokens, but you can lock down at least which token can get moved so it'd only be the token whose turn it is right now. And the final option here, is to simply turn interactions all the way off and say, nope, I'm just gonna move the tokens as the DM and not let anybody else move them. They can scroll around, they can zoom in and out, but they can't move the tokens. Now let's say I need to draw everybody's attention to an area. Well, because they're able to move themselves around now, it can be a little bit hard to keep attention right where you want it. So there's this little button here little magic wand that if you click that and hold it will make a mark cool little glowy mark here that shows in all places you can say I go kick over the table well which table do you kick over this table yes that table and the players themselves can go to the magic wand and also highlight sections here under encounter plus you can go to settings and you can even set your own custom colors here like that. There we go. No, this table, that's the one I wanted to kick over. Gotcha. Now you'll notice it says unknown over there on the left side. That's because we haven't put a name for ourselves as a player here yet. You can put your real name, you can put your character name, whatever you want. You can put both. There we go. And we'll hit save. Now it shows that name when I'm highlighting. Well, last year, one of the cool features that was added to Encounter Plus was the ability to do dice rolls. But now that we're playing online, this is more important than ever. If I bring up a spell, let's say, that has damage in it, I can click right on that damage, and it will roll the dice for me. Here in Encounter Plus, if I bring up the chat log, I can now see that that role has been pushed to all the players. Now that's great, but what if I don't want to push it to the players? Well, we can go to settings, scroll on down, and choose if we want this to roll publicly or privately. So I'm gonna say privately, and now when I roll, my dice roll does not get pushed to the players. Players can also roll their own dice over here. We've got a little dice roller. You can do commands. And of course you can just chat. And on the DM side, hit these three dots here and I can bring up the same chat log right here. As well as a history of all of my rolls. One thing that I'm just going to tease you here that uh, I will have to do a video on later is that there is a plugin, not from the developer, but from one of us that hangs out in the Discord, Bob, you're amazing, who's made a plugin for Chrome, Firefox, I believe he's working on Safari, that will actually push dice rolls from D&D Beyond into Encounter Plus. So I'll have to make a video on that in the future, but know that that's a possibility. Now I just want to cover a couple of common questions that I see when folks are using the web view. One is, one is they start up and the screen might be all black. Well, as long as it doesn't say WebSocket disconnected, that's what happens if I close Encounter Plus and that's gonna tell me over here that there's no connection in just a moment. 
There we go, WebSocket disconnected. That means, you know, Encounter Plus isn't running or it's not able to make the connection through your router for some reason and you've got to go double check your port forwarding settings. If it is connected and it's all black, go double check your line of sight settings, your fog of war settings, and sometimes you just need to double click, place the party again, and it will refresh and get that up and running. Also, don't forget to choose which map you're presenting by tapping, holding, or right clicking and choosing present. Here you can see that it's all black because I'm presenting this map. Well, why is it all black? Well, it's all black because we don't have any tokens in here that have line of sight and we have line of sight turned on. If I turn off line of sight, we see the map. If I double tap, place my party here and one of them has vision turned on, now they start to show up. And again, that vision can be edited right from here. Just type in your minimum and maximum that you have for line of sight, make sure it's enabled, hit save, and that token will be ready to go. So try all those things. Don't forget to present the map you want and to place tokens that have line of sight to double check that you're ready to go. Oh, and one final thing that I almost forgot. I'm going to hop into my campaign here, go find a map, load this up. Now this is a video map. And if I press and hold or right click on the Mac and choose present, it will now push this video map over to the online map. I am so freaking excited to see that this is now working, that you can play with video maps online with your friends. This is really the only software I've seen that does this well. There are some others out there where you can plug in like a YouTube video to be the map, but this one lets you load these maps natively and it pushes it out to everybody who's playing online. And if they're having an issue connecting and it's having an issue transferring, these maps do tend to be large. It will just display a static still image for that person to use while the map is loading. I hope you're as excited as I am to dive into using the web client. If you have any questions about how to use it, or especially if you have any issues getting it set up, head on over to the Discord. We can help you out there. But that is a quick look at the most important parts of using the web client to play D&D with your friends online in Encounter Plus.